Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out the performance of AMD's all-new 7000 series Mendocino APUs. Now, uh, I've actually got the very first laptop that's come to the consumer market that has this chip. This is the Acer Aspire 3 A315 24P. Now, this video really isn't a review on this specific laptop. It's more about what these new 7000 Mendocino chips can do, and they do offer pretty great budget performance for what we have here. And, you know, it's been a long time coming. We've been waiting for our DNA 2 iGPUs to come to these cheaper Ryzen chips, and we finally got it with Mendocino. And really, what makes this little APU so exciting are, you know, budget laptops like the one we have here, and low-cost gaming handhelds. Now, before we get into testing, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office, but the main reason that I use URCD Keys keys is for their Windows keys. Right now their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. We'll definitely see these new chips come to handhelds in the near future, and this really just gives us a chance to see what those handhelds can really do. This has been something I've been wanting to test since uh, AMD announced these Mendocino chips, and we finally got our hands on one, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so for the system we're going to be testing today, we've got the brand new AMD Ryzen 3 7320U. Now the CPU side of things is actually based on Zen 2, that's how they're going to keep that cost down. It's a 6 nanometer 15 watt chip, but we can go up from 15 watts. 4 cores, 8 threads, we've got a base clock of 2.4 gigahertz and a boost up to 4.1. Now one thing that I like to mention here is all of these Mendocino chips are going to have the same new RDNA 2 iGPU. So if we went up to the Ryzen 5 7520U, basically the only difference we're going to get is a higher base clock and a higher boost clock. And all of them have the new AMD Radeon 610MI GPU. This is based on RDNA 2. We've got a clock up to 1900 megahertz, but we've only got two compute units. So we've got two CUs with this new RDNA 2 iGPU. And when you compare this to some of the older Vega iGPUs, those went from 3 up to, I believe, 10. There might have been a 12 somewhere in there. I can't really remember. But we are based on new architecture here, being RDNA 2 as opposed to Vega. And another great thing we have going is DDR5 RAM. So this actually has LP DDR5 RAM running at 5500 megahertz. It is in dual channel, but we've only got eight with this laptop. Like I said, this was the first one to come to market. Wish I could have got one with a little more, but we're still going to test this out and see what this new chip can do. And if you're not familiar with these integrated graphics, they don't have their own built-in VRAM, so they rely on system memory. We've got much faster memory here, given that we're using LP DDR5 as opposed to DDR4 on older Vega platforms, so this will also help out with performance. But yeah, I'm actually super excited to see what this thing can do, so let's go ahead and move over to Windows. All right, so here it is. I've been up and running for a little while now. I've updated everything. We've got Windows up to date, brand new drivers. I've got a lot of stuff installed that we're going to be testing out. And uh, yeah, I mean, overall, it's a snappy little chip. Using this as an inexpensive laptop for web browsing, email checking, you're not going to have an issue with it. I was actually really surprised by how quick this thing is. When it comes to RAM, it is running in dual channel. It's non-user upgradable. It's soldered to the board. It's LP DDR5 running at 5500 megahertz. And a lot of these cheaper laptops with these chips will have this soldered RAM and only around 8 gigs to keep the price down. I really wish we could have picked up something with 16, but unfortunately I just couldn't find anything with 16. Now the first thing I actually wanted to find out for myself was what kind of TDP this chip is running at. Keep in mind, different manufacturers might set this up a bit differently, but uh, we can take a look here. I've got core temp. It'll show us our total CPU package power. and I'm going to run a benchmark with CPU-Z. 
And as you can see, once we stress that out, it jumps up to around 22 watts. Now, uh, we still have that GPU that's included with this die, so that's also going to send a little wattage to it. And just keep in mind, this is running at around 3.7 to 3.8 gigahertz continuously. And once we put a load on that GPU, it'll jump up to around 28 watts and then level off around 25. Now this is what the little laptop is set at, but I'm going to tell you right now, to get that 3.7 on the CPU and 1900 megahertz on the GPU, around 25 watts is all you're going to need. I can throw a little more wattage at this using a third-party application, but it's not going to help out because we've already got those clocks on the CPU and GPU up there. When it comes to an everyday use case scenario, we'll never see that kind of wattage, but you know, when gaming on something like this, it could definitely stress it out, and that's really the next thing I want to jump over to. And the first one we've got here is Forza Horizon 5. I was actually really impressed by what this thing is doing. Now, it's not a 1080p machine. We've only got two CUs on that low NI GPU. But with Forza Horizon 5, we're at 720p. I've also got the AMD CAS set to performance. You can also go with FSR if you want to. And for the preset, we're at low. I didn't even go to very low yet. And uh, with this game, I actually averaged 45 FPS. Obviously, this isn't going to be super impressive for somebody that has a gaming laptop, but you got to think about what we're working with here. This is the brand new Mendocino chips from AMD. We're going to see this a lot in cheaper laptops and even handhelds down the road. I mean, this was the first one that I was able to get my hands on, and we're only at around 18 watts right now with this game. And you can see that that CPU does boost up to around 3.9 gigahertz. And yeah, I'd say this thing really isn't doing that bad. Now the next thing I want to take a look at are some benchmarks I ran on this machine. Then we'll move over to some more PC games and finally wrap it up with emulation. And in my opinion, I think that was the most impressive part about this chip. First up, we've got Geekbench 5 coming in with a single core of 1027 Multi 3784. We're far off from the higher end chips, but you know, that's not what this thing's about. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark Night Raid, total score 7591. And finally, Firestrike coming in with a 1,582. Moving back over to some more PC gaming, we've got the original Skyrim at 720p medium settings, and it will run this at 60fps 1080p low settings or a low medium mix, but I just took it down because I wanted all of those medium settings, and yeah, I mean, we're getting a really steady 60 out of this, and again, we're right there around 17 to 18 watts. In order to get Street Fighter V running at 60 FPS, I did have to drop this down to 720p low, and usually when I run this on APUs, I at least got a medium low mix, but with this it just wouldn't handle it. But uh, at 720 low, it will run this game quite well. Now I definitely wanted to take it up a little bit to see what this thing can do, and with The Witcher 3, it kind of fell right on its face. We're at an average of around 25 FPS, low 720. And uh, another thing I want to mention here is I did try some of the new Spider-Man games and even Doom Eternal. Unfortunately, my VRAM got maxed out. We've only got 8 gigs of RAM here, and this iGPU uses our system memory as VRAM, so we just kind of maxed out. If I had 16 in here, we could have tested those games out. It was so close with GTA 5. Here it is at 720p normal settings and we got an average of 56 FPS. I mean, we just need a little more and if this had an extra CU on that GPU, we could definitely run this. When it comes to PC gaming on this new chip, yeah, there are titles that we can run at 720p. You're kind of going to be limited to the older stuff. Indie stuff is also going to work really well. But now it's time to move over to some emulation testing and this thing does an amazing job. First up, we've got GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. F-Zero GX, and with this one we did have to drop it down to 720p, but uh, all of the other stuff that I tested here with GameCube and even Wii was able to go up to 1080, but when it comes down to it, F-Zero GX is a harder one to emulate, especially the track we're on right now for these lower end chips. But here's some Wii using the same emulator, 1080p, Vulcan, Tatsunoko versus Capcom, running great here. And all in all, about 10 watts is what this thing is going to pull for GameCube and Wii. And we can go up from there. I mean, if we wanted to up the resolution, it actually might handle 1440 with some of the easier to emulate games, but they still look great here at 1080. And I mean, even at 720, we've still got to upscale and they play fine. And we kind of got the same thing with PS2. So here's Gran Turismo 4. I had to take it down to 720p with this one and God of War 2, but with something like Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex, which is a much easier game to emulate, 
we can go up to 4x with this chip. Now I will tell you that using the Vulcan back in with a couple of the games gave me some crashes. I'm using the new development build of PCSX2. And this could really come down to the newer chipset itself, but uh, this even does God of War 2 at 720p with that DirectX 11 back in. So yeah, these new Mendocino chips can emulate GameCube, Wii, PS3 emulation. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, this isn't going to do something like Skate 3. We don't have enough power with this APU, so, you know, God of War 3, Skate 3, Killzone, those are out of the question. But there are games that this thing will run at full speed using this emulator. We've got Tekken 6, another one I tested was Ninja Gaiden Sigma, and Demon Souls. This one runs at 30 FPS, and you can see we're pulling around 20 watts from that APU, but it is trucking right through. Really surprised to see this little thing doing PS3 emulation. It's not a total powerhouse, and it's not going to do the really hard to emulate PS3 games, but there's a lot of stuff we can get done on this thing. So yeah, this new Mendocino chip actually performed much better than I thought it was gonna with gaming and especially with emulation. Now we've already got some announcements from some of the major handheld manufacturers. They're going to be using this chip, uh, the Ryzen 3 version and even the Ryzen 5 version. But like I mentioned with that Ryzen 5 version, we've got the same iGPU, a little bit of a higher base clock on the CPU and a little higher boost. But you know, I wouldn't expect tremendous gains going from this Ryzen 3 to the Ryzen 5 when it comes to these Mendocino APUs. But it's still pretty exciting to see these RDNA 2 based iGPUs come to these cheaper laptops and handhelds. Now, if you're interested in this laptop, they are selling on Amazon right now. I'll leave a link in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this chip, just let me know in the comments below. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I'd like to test, but we are kind of limited here by that VRAM factor. Really, we've got 8 gigs of total system memory, and a lot of the AAA games that I wanted to test just wouldn't start up due to that fact. But another thing we could test here is Linux, maybe SteamOS. Let me know your thoughts down below. And like always, thanks for watching.